further developments. Static electricity. Isaac Newton started something very big, and it wasn't just F equal MA or the law of gravity. It was really a way of thinking about doing science. He was starting a new field of investigations. It was partly a philosophical, it was partly that he was using a mathematics to so powerful an effect.、Mm. And、uh, it was partly that he was、uh, constantly grounding what he was doing with experiments. These new ideas were all connected, connected with direct experimental verification. It was really a A fla- it was really a, a flame for how you do science, how you investigate the world. For 200 years at least, in fact, continuing today after Isaac Newton and after publication of the pre- pa- Principia, a growing number of scientists, you can define the, de- you, you can definitely call them a scientist at the point, follow this path, and the field of the classical physics is growing. It's certainly not defined just by the, the, the content that Isaac Newton was investigating. We, we will go far beyond that content. It, it's really the, the task now for the rest of, us, rest of the course to try to lay some sort of the path in, our, in the ever ex, ex, expanding classical physics domain that was being developed. We are going to try、uh, to find a minimal subset of the ideas and the、um, concept to follow,、um, which, which try to span the sense of the classical physics. It's not entirely possible, and there are some compromises you have to make, and there will be always be some topics of classical physics that we won't be able to discuss. But、uh, in the end, we're going to cover. Those core ideas that、uh, allow us to explain the broadest array of the physics, f- physical phenomena, and the measurable quantities in the world. So let's lay out a little bit, a, a little roadmap for where we are headed. I, I, I want to start with Newton's ideas all of, all of the time. Every time we are talking about some new concept in the back of the, our mind, we're thinking about the forces, momentum, and energy. In particular, the, these conservation laws and the law of motion will allow us to make sense of anything that we want to investigate. And if we want to study, for instance, electricity and magnetism, which are really important forces in our lives, We will be talking about new ideas, very new ideas that Isaac Newton, idea, New, Isaac Newton would, be, would found quite alien, and yet at the same time they are grounded in how objects move and why they move that way. So we will also be talking about the fundamental con- constituents of the world. So we, we will think about, we want to think about the atoms and the motion. The, the, the motion not just of, of atoms but the motion of any particle that's vibrating or wiggling. We will get, we, we will see that the, this is connected to the theory of electricity and the theory of the light and the op- and also connected to the、uh, theory of the, the optics. Also, in the, in the eye, we will try to put this all together. We will look. We look also at the thermodynamics, which would be the, the explanation of and the understanding of the heat and temperature. In the end, in the end,、um, we, w- when we put all, all, all that together, we will really have flame for the kind of question that people continue to investigate today and which were studied and understood over this period of time following Isaac Newton's when classical physics was its, its really. Heyday. And,、um, well, uh, we'll discover a new hero in this part of this course,、um, which is who is、uh, James Clerk Maxwell. Maxwell and his equations defined the theory of the electricity and magnetism for us. Today, his two electricity and magnetism, what Isaac Newton was to the fundamental underlying laws of ma- mechanics, that's going to be the first topic that we will want to. Build up to.
So we'll discover the, the electricity and the magnetism everywhere in life. The, when we there are applications uh, when we think about our our technological lives, and you can see the law of the electricity in particular. Magnetism is a little bit more hidden, but we will talk about because because you discover that magnetism is also everywhere in the technology that we use, just not as a not, just not quite as obvious uh, or visible as electrical phenomena, and uh, that 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 we are studying. It's not just about technology in the world we live in, but it's also about uh, the structure structure of the world we live in. When we look at material objects and how they how how hard they are and what color they are, or or, or if you look at the phenomena of light, you will you will understand the connections between the electricity and, and magnetism and all of these other aspects of the world we live we live in. Um, back in the Newton's day, electricity and magnetism were little curiosities. He was surely aware of the fact that in the winter time when we when he brushed or combed his hair, it might stand on its its end or crackle a little bit. Th this static electrical phenomena has always been observed, but people didn't really pay much attention to it. <coughs> uh, it seems to be a little laboratory uh, curiosity or some sort of funny thing that people didn't really understand. Mm. So this obscure little force of nature began to attract pe pe people's attention, and in the hundred years post Newton's mo post Newton, more and more scientists were trying to figure out this story. What is going on? It it, it seems to be a new force of nature. Mm. It's very different from gravity, so, although it has a new com com common uh, com commonalities. And uh, as we began to develop our understanding of the phenomena, historically people realize that yes, indeed we can investigate this this in this in the way of Isaac Newton would have. Mm. So we can investigate it. We can investi investigate it, making use of the concept of the force and acceleration and momentum conservation and energy conservation. So today, the lecture we start with static electricity. Static electricity is just what you think it is. It is. You you walk across a carpet, you build up a static charge, and you touch the uh, doorknob, and you experience a shock. Uh, so we like to understand what the physical under underpinning phenomena are here. Uh, um, uh, you take the clothes out of the, the dryer, you pull them apart, they, they crackle, and, um, and then they stick together. Anything that stick together implies a force of nature, and you could lump it together with friction. Mm. But it... it um, um, but it becomes a obvi it becomes obvious pretty quickly that uh, there is something different about static electricity. If you love the comb through your hair and your hair is standing up a little bit, especially on a dry day or in a dry climate, it's it's clear just it's clear that's not just friction, because now there is something left behind in the air hair. Furthermore, the comb has some new property, it's charged. It's statically charged and if you hold it down next to some little bits of the paper or something, they, they dance around a little bit and you can see some curious phenomena. In order to investigate this, I'd like to start at what, what might seem like an electricity school level. I really want to go back to the, the basic and really uh, the goal here is for you to ask yourself if I lived a couple of hundred years ago and I was trying to make sense of the static electricity, what do I do? What kind of experiments could I do in my kitchen? That, that, that would teach me something about how the world works. I recognize that most of people have learned a lot of buzzwords and big ideas about electricity and static electricity probably back in the grade, scra grade school, but many times we don't ask, how do we know? Why do we believe it? these things. 
I want to lead you a little bit through a path, and it's an oversimplified path, but、um, very productive in thinking about how you might go about investigating some new and ultimately extra- extraordinary rich branch of the science physics. So let's think about、uh, static elect- electricity. One of the、uh, Americans most famous for this investigation is Benjamin Franklin. There were a lot of people who were doing this. Ben Franklin was one of the whole crowd of the scientists. I don't really think of the, I don't think really、uh, Benjamin Franklin so much as a scientist. I think、uh, um, of him、uh, more in his political role in the, in the early United States. But、uh, there is、uh, some famous experiments、mm, that we all Know about the, the where he flew a kite during a li- lightning storm. <clears throat> and、uh, surely, surely one of the most dangerous and stupid physics experiments in all of history. Benjamin Franklin could, could certainly have killed himself by flying that kite out in the electrical storm. He did learn something useful about lightning, and mostly what Ben Franklin was doing was working inside of his laboratory, inside of his house, and he would love a cat fur and amber rods or uh, grass rods with wool. He was just loving material objects and uh, not seeing that they would move somehow statically charged. He was, he was trying to figure out what the story was. So, here is a simple experiment that you can do. I, can, I cannot encourage you enough to go after the class to, and try this out of yourself. Take some scotch tape and you are going to waste some tape. Take, take about a foot of scotch tape and、uh, fold over the end, of, end so that they are taped onto themselves so that you have a little tabs so that. When you stick it onto something,、mm. um, you can put it off more easily. Take a second piece of tape and uh, take, make the tapes, tapes and lay it down on the top of the first pieces of tape. Now you have two pieces of scotch tapes、uh, stuck together.、Mm. And then take the two of them and lay them down on a flat and smooth table, hopefully a clean table that doesn't have a hole of. Uh, grease or anything on it. So there are two pieces of tape, and the, then do it again. Now you have to two duplicate experiments, and it's important that we duplicate the experiment. You will see why. I'm telling you some steps to follow, but really, what I want to,、uh, what I want you to do is play.、Mm. Um, I, I want to. T- I want you to think about other experiments that you could do. What if you took a third piece of tape?、Um, what if you tried it on different material? What if, what if, I want,、uh, what if you do another experiment? I want you to m a r k around a little bit so that you can investigate the phenomena that arises. Otherwise, I'm just telling you the answer, which is really established by people playing little simple game like this. Wow. Ben Franklin was fundamentally、um, playing a little game like this, ex- except he didn't have a scotch tape. <laughs>、uh, scotch tape is、uh, nice because it does tend to exhibit this static electricity phenomena pretty easily. You are doomed if you live in a very, very moist climate. If, if, if the humidi- humidity in the, in, the, in, the, in the room is too high, you will find、uh, that the static electricity experiment d o n t work so well. You might wait until the winter time, and it's often drier then.、Mm. So, there is a reason why dry air makes static electricity, electric- Electrostatic electricity experiment w o r k better, which will come to later. So, what you want to do is to investigate the phenomena, and the phenomena occurs when you rip the pair of the table and then you rip the two pieces of tape apart. It will be immediately obvious that、uh, these things are, are changed. They will act like the clothes coming out of the dryer, but they, stay, but they will stay that way. Just Just be sure that they don't sort of clap up and stick to your arm or something. You want to make sure that they are dangling 
uh, dangling and you'll see that, that, that they are at, at, attracted to you and they are uh, attracted to each other. Mm. It's helpful when you are doing this experiment if you take a pen and you just mark the top tape T and the little button tape B so that you can remember which tape was on the top and the, which tape was on the bottom when they when when they were lying on the table, right? So the reason that you want to do that is 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 you will discover that different things happen with the top tape within the bottom tape. At first, it what it may not be obvious. At first, both of them are attracted to you, and they are attracted to each other. It seems as if you discover a new attractive force of nature, as gravity is an attractive force between masses. Now we have a different kind of attractive force, but the, the interesting thing, the, the really surprising thing about electricity is that if you take two identical pieces of tape, um, that, that's why you, um, that's why you need, need the identical setup. If you take two top pieces and you hold them together, they will hurt, they will bend apart from the one another. It's a repulsive force rather than an attractive force. So now you have to go to scratch your head because something different is going on. And now you have to play around a little bit to try to see if you can realize what the systematic under underpinning ingredients are in the story. How can we make up a prediction about who is going to attract and who is going to repel in what circumstances? So what I want to do in is, is to think about crafting a model. In the 1700s, there was a tremendous amount of intellectual effort. Everybody who was working with electrostatic electricity was trying to con construct his own model to explain and uh, understand what's going on. It might have been a mental model or m mathematical model. Remember what I mean by models. In old Greek astronomy, people were looking at the sky and they created a model of how the solar system worked. One of the models has had and uh, one of the model uh, different model had this uh, one of the model had Earth at the center which everybody everybody going around us and uh, a different model had uh, the sun at the center and everything going around it. There was a third model which Tycho Brahe subscribed to, in which the Earth was at the center with the sun, with the sun going around us and everybody else going around the sun. You could imagine a very, very different kind of models. There are a, a very, uh, they are all very mechanical. You could imagine other kind of ways of thinking about the solar system, and then uh, there is a question. You you, you, you you have your model and I have mine, but let's think about some experimental and look at some data to see whether your model continues to describe the data accurately. Hmm. So, if, if it stops working because we either come up with a clever experiment or we just made more careful measurements, then we have to toss your model and we will keep refining until we have one that robust. This is really the history of electricity and magnetism as well. In, in the end, the model that I'm going to tell you about is, 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 is a familiar one that we all run. What I'm suggesting now is that, that, that you could come up with the model and if you question it or you wonder why does he say that there are electric charges, for instance, on, on this piece of tape, which is exactly what I'm going to say. Huh. So you can ask yourself, let me think about some experiments where maybe an alternative model could be contradicted or verified by experiments. Maybe you'll, you'll come up with an alternative model of electricity and magnetism. It would be fairly remarkable since there, there have now been about two or three hundred years of the steady, progressive experiment, experimentation and verification of the model that the world is made of the object. Um, we call them atoms, okay? 
which have the electric charge in, in them. Um, electric charge is a new world I'm making up. Okay. And the uh, and, uh, electric charge is a quantity, the thing, it's a material thing, which exhibits these new forces of the static electricity. So somehow when you rip the pieces of tape apart, they are becoming electrically charged. And at first you might say, okay, maybe there is one kind of charge in the universe and you can, you can have more of it, you can have less of it. That, that's a hypothesis. It's a model and you could test that model and discover that it doesn't work very well because you can't explain why the top, top and bottom and the tapes are attra attract one another and two top of the pieces repair one another and the two bottom pieces repair one another and yet and yet uh, either top or bottom attract to your shirt <laughs> so there is a variety of evidence already in this super simple experiment where i claim that you need to hypothesize, hypothesize two types of the electric charge you have to give them two different names. We could call them the top type and the bottom type if, you, if we just doing the scotch tape experiments. Ben Franklin came up with the name positive and negative. Uh, one of the tapes will become positively charged, the other will become negatively charged, but the, these are just names. Mm. And uh, he could have called them chocolate and vanilla chocolate or X and Y charges. And uh, it's kind of nice that he chose a name positive and a negative. We'll talk, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about why that's a, such a productive choice of uh, naming.